Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Florida State Representative, the Honorable Scott Plakin. Well, Aaron, what an inspiration. God bless you for what you're doing. Um, good, e good afternoon, everyone. And before I get started, I just want to acknowledge my daughter, Jeannie, who came up from Florida. She's here tonight, a caregiver her, for her mom, a, new, a nursing student. God bless you. Thank you for being here, and I'm so proud of you. It's such an honor to stand before you today, looking over this vast sea of purple. I'm truly humbled. Honestly, though, this is a place where I never imagined that I'd be standing. I would normally, to this day, be standing on the floor of the House of Representatives while looking to my left in the same spot in the West Gallery where my wife Susie has sat for nine straight years. But I'm not there tonight, and neither is she. She can't make the trip to Tallahassee anymore, and neither, and, and you know, she just can't make that trip anymore. We've now joined the five million families in America in the fight against Alzheimer's. Susie was active in our community and is a mother of six. She's what Zig Ziglar would refer to as a good finder, always seeing the best in everyone, especially me. During our first hospital stay, there are more than a thousand Facebook responses with many saying how Susie's life has touched them. If you knew Susie, wherever you were in your walk with God, you were just a little bit closer to him by knowing her. One of the responses I remember most described her as a beacon of God's love. Like many of you here tonight that have been impacted and in some ways devastated by this disease, I'm trying to do what I can to help more people know what this disease is really about and what it means to families. I'm finding that by sharing her story, it's helped our family to find meaning and some peace in her walking through this. I'm actually a little embarrassed to stand before you and tell you that before her diagnosis, I, even as a state policymaker, had very little awareness of what this disease was really about. I'd heard about it but just thought it was that disease where you slowly lose your memories and then over time you pass away. Of course, with us, it just started just like everyone else. Over a few year period, we, she started struggling with remembering things and then our family started to notice it more and more. You've heard this before. Then comes the part where you say, well, we're just getting a little older and this kind of thing happens. I now know that this epidemic is a whole lot more than just forgetting stuff. I had never heard of agitation or sundown syndrome. I never imagined that Susie would have grand mal seizures, head injuries with internal bleeding, staples in the back of her head after one of the falls. Never heard the word myoclonic, as in myoclonic seizures. And she would have to be hospitalized with electrodes and in a very uncomfortable situation for days that she kept pulling off due to the agitation. I never pictured her wandering off, and this happened just a few weeks ago, uh, walked in one of her neighbor's house and was doing their dishes, and the sheriff brought her home. I never knew about incontinence. I never imagined that I would have to wrestle with my beautiful wife to get her to bathe or to change her. I never knew that there would be a cascading series of doctors and medicines and insurance challenges. I could have never imagined that my 56-year-old wife of 32 years, my best friend, would no longer be able to recall my name or the names of our six children. Yes, my friends, as you well know, and I've found out, it's a whole lot more than just forgetting stuff. I just never knew. Last year in a speech on the House floor, I compared this, the effects of this disease as if a nuclear bomb exploded in the middle of our family. But the blast area we know of this disease goes way beyond our immediate family. Our extended family has been doing what they can to help with care. Our friends have been impacted, sometimes helping with care, sometimes just dropping over to visit, holding her hand, and grieving over the slow loss of their friend. It ultimately, as we know, has an impact on our communities. Before this, the term it takes a village is not a term that I would normally use. But with Alzheimer's and other dementias, it truly does take a village. The people in this room, you all tonight, are the backbone 
the leaders of this village where no one wants to live, but increasingly, everyone is now a citizen, like it or not. In this village called Alzheimer's, everyone is the same. Doesn't care if you're black or white or brown. Doesn't care if you're rich or poor or a man or a woman. Doesn't care if you're old or if you're young, like my beautiful wife Susie. Doesn't care if you're an accomplished shower singer or you're, or you're the rhinestone cowboy. It doesn't care if you're a blue collar worker, or a white collar worker, or if you're retired, or even if you're a former president of the United States. It sometimes haunts families through generations with the fear that it will strike the next generation. It knows no boundaries. It respects no persons. Alzheimer's disease is a fierce enemy, but not too fierce for the collective efforts over time of the people in this room and others like you that have signed up as soldiers to fight this brutal enemy so that future generations will one day know a world without Alzheimer's. My friends, the more I've learned over the past several years, I know that this is a war that we will win. I know that there are many here that have taken their personal pain sort of have we are, and they're suffering with a loved one and are translating that pain into action by being here today and going back to our communities, carrying the message of hope that we all have, that we've talked about tonight, about meeting Alzheimer's first survivor. And I know Susie and your loved ones would take comfort in knowing that your efforts by sharing their stories are helping so many others. When I had the opportunity last fall to speak at the Walk to End Alzheimer's, Susie came to the stage with me to present the first white flower, representing the first survivor. I looked across the crowd and could see the beautiful mosaic of purple, uh, blue, purple, and yellow flowers representing those diagnosed caregivers and those that are no longer with us. As I looked over the crowd, I remember in, the, in the, kind of in the imagine in my mind's eye, I could see dozens in the future of white flowers sprinkled among this crowd with those holding them with tears streaming down their faces. What a scene that will be one day, and we will see that scene. There is hope, and the people in this room are that hope and lead that hope. I believe that one day at walks all over the country, there will be thousands of these white flowers being held that pe from people that are recovering from Alzheimer's disease. In a future convention like this, there will be hundreds of people here wanting to volunteer because they have been healed and want to give back. But it starts right here tonight with you and me. As a member of the House, in Florida, I've had the opportunity to speak with many of the advocates as they come to Tallahassee to meet with us. They want to help, but sometimes they don't really know what to do. Whether it's your state or in Washington, D.C., you can give legislators lots of facts, figures, brochures, spreadsheets, but really what most has the impact with us is your personal story of how Alzheimer's has impacted you and your loved ones. It looks like the states are increasingly becoming ground zero when it comes to issues like Alzheimer's and related dementias. There's a few things that we all can do to move the ball forward, ball forward, especially with the states, mainly in three areas. First, effectuate to, uh, work to effectuate policy changes, not budget. It's not, that's different than budget. For example, last session in Florida, we passed a law to authorize yet another, the 16th Memory Disorder Clinic in Florida which will be housed at Florida Hospital, a large chain in our state. We passed legislation to make the month of June Alzheimer's Awareness Month. There's a lot of ideas like this that can be implemented in your state that don't cost money, which can be very impactful. Second, in state budgets, like we saw, heard about federal budget items, tonight there are thousands of line items. You'll likely find appropriations regarding things like research, respite care. I even have a request in this year for $100,000 for a, a, a mobile mem a memory mobile. It, it's, it'll serve about a dozen counties. So, it, okay, did I hear a clap? 
for the <laughs> mobile member. <laughs> As you organize your outreach, it's a good thing to visit all the legislature, legislators in your state. However, as one of the earlier speakers said, with AIM, I would focus on members of the healthcare budget mainly, committees, all of them, who typically sort this out before it goes to the full, full body to vote on. Most of the decisions are made by that committee or similar committees and its chairperson I'd uh, try to become friends in particular, just like in DC, with the chairperson. Lastly, there are things that you can do to get noticed and to stand out among many really important needs that we have to priorities, and there are a lot of important needs that come to us. For example, on the, uh, the night before the day on the Hill, due to the Alzheimer's Association in the state of Florida, Michelle and her colleagues, our capital is lighted purple. All the legislators see it, their speeches from legislators and activists, sort of a rally for the next day. It typically gets a lot of news and can bring attention to our cause. With these types of strategies, you can have impact on your state in ways that you might not even realize by your efforts in your state capitals across our land. Last year, as I was presenting the bill to designate June as Alzheimer's and Awareness Week month, rather, I gave a floor speech on the impact our, of our in our state, and also had an opportunity to attribute to Susie, who we arranged to bring up for the day so she could hear my words. It was the last day of session, and I knew it would likely be the last time she would taking her, be taking her same spot in the West Gallery after nine years. As I was speaking, I noticed that members, one by one, of both parties were leaving their seats and standing behind me as my speech went on. Now, since there are so many important issues, the speakers of the House have sort of a rule. They try to dissuade this kind of thing. Since we have a lot of important work to do and not much time to do it, it's sort of an informal House rule. So I looked at Susie above me, that way, and my colleagues behind me. I had a hard time finishing my speech. It's a moment I'll never forget. But then later that day, I went back to my office. I watched the video. As I viewed it, and the sea of faces behind me of both parties, I saw Richard Corcoran, the speaker of our house. He had left the speaker's po uh, podium, sort of going against his own rules, and he was standing behind me. And speaking to him later, I found out that his mother died of Alzheimer's disease. As we work towards awareness in our various spheres, there's one other thing, one thing I'd kind of like to talk about tonight where Alzheimer's awareness has a long way to go. It's in our healthcare system, particularly our hospitals, that I've found are way behind the curve when Alzheimer's patients are admitted for some of the conditions that come along with it. For example, if a patient refuses to take medica medications or they get agitated, pull their electrodes off, try to leave the room, they don't have any idea of what to do, and the stress on caregivers can be overwhelming. We've actually lived this. So about six weeks ago, Lori Scott, a local elected official, came to see me. She relayed to me the same similar experiences that we had, and I've talked to many, many that have had. She then presented this idea. Why not simply add a purple bracelet, like they have other bracelet, to their protocols when admitted to the hospital, to let the nurses on the floors know that they need to be handled differently and maybe post the 10 Alzheimer's that do's and don'ts at the nurse's station, for example. So I had breakfast with Daryl Tall, the CEO of the uh, Adventist Health System, 16 hospitals in the middle of our state, and I told him about the idea. Without hesitation, he said he loves it. I told him that I was speaking here today and that my goal would be to talk about the start of an initiative led by their, what they're doing already that could hopefully spread across our country to bring greater awareness within hospitals to help patient and care caregivers at their most difficult moments. He looked me right in the eye and said, I love the idea, and my goal would not even be able to have you to, to talk about it, but to actually have the prototype bracelet for that day. This morning by FedEx in the hotel, arrived at my hotel with this, bracelet number one. And I, I have a picture in my mind that this, in hospitals all across America, could catch on. 
So I would challenge people to go back to their local communities and bring this idea up. Florida Hospital is taking it one step further. As a result of this, they're, they're forming a task force to see how they can better serve these patients and their families afflicted with Alzheimer's. So again, anything you could do to perpetuate this, I would really appreciate it, because I think it's something that could really make a difference in a lot of people's lives. You know, today, as we, as we read the headlines, as we talked about earlier, we see so much political division in our nations, and it's really disappointing sometimes. One day last year, Matt Wilhite, a Democrat member, he's actually, him and I are in a picture, one of the pictures up here, came to see me. I'm a Republican. He told me with tears in his eyes that his mom was recently diagnosed. Out of that conversation has developed a friendship. Out of that friendship, we had the idea to present purple ties to all of the male members and purple scarves to all the female members of the House of Representatives. We delivered them along with a note that gave a few stats about the disease in our state that concluded with this quote, although purple is the color of Alzheimer's awareness, it is also the color that is created when red and blue are joined together. And the, and the note we gave to the members finished, as Republicans and Democrats, we must all unite and join together to fight this devastating disease. We, we, we also encouraged members to wear purple ties on every Wednesday, which many of them do every week, including our speaker. So I'll close with this. Over the last couple of years, as I walked through the Capitol, I get asked literally about 10 times a day, how is Susie doing? How do you really answer that question when the best that I can hope for, for my best friend right now, in the 32 year love of my life, is for simply one more day that it doesn't get any worse? As we know, it doesn't get better. Then last week, as I was in the parking garage and about to leave, Representative Goodson, a sort of cranky and curmudgeonly guy, <laughs> asked me the question, how's Susie? I could see, see the sincere interest in his eyes because he has known Susie for so long. It then occurred to me, and I actually teared up there in the parking garage thinking about, about it, that one day, because of the efforts of people in this room, maybe it's me or someone, future House member, with a loved one diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, will be walking through the Capitol and maybe through the parking garage, and will be asked the same question. How is Susie or some other person in the future? Then will come their answer. Thank you for asking. You know, she's coming back. She's getting better. She's gonna make it. Thank you for everything you do. And I look forward to the day when our friends and loved ones and people across America carrying white flowers that may not otherwise be here, but not for your efforts. Thank you. God bless you.